Welcome to Academic Web Services Training. I'm your host, David Pinter. And in this session, what we're going to be talking about is creating a form with a submit button. We're also going to be placing some input boxes on here and some radio buttons with a submit button as well and a combo box. So let's get started. First thing we know on here is we see we have name, email, and question. This will be a multi-line box here. And we have an area here for a drop-down combo box. And we have a couple radio buttons that are going to be placed here. So how do you do that? Well, simply what I want to do is I want to come over here to the rectangle tool here. And what I'll do is I'll make that stroke color right here to be a black color and then simply draw out a rectangle over here just like this. Now what I'll do is I'll take that and I will duplicate it for the email and the question like this. And I'll size that up a little bit, bring that down here. And then what I'll do is I'll just take another one of these right here and I'll just duplicate this and then bring it over to here to use it as our combo box, like that. Okay, make it a little bit wider, like this. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then what we're gonna do now is since we have these one, two, three, four different boxes, what we need to do is make sure each one of those has the right and correct properties to them. So the first thing I'm gonna click, click the first one, I'm gonna come over here to the Buttons and Forms dialog box palette. What you can do is you come up here to go to Windows, and come down to interactive and then right there buttons and forms that's where that's where you're going to find this so the first thing you can do is i come over here with this first one selected and i'm going to come here and click this down and then create a text field out of it right there i'm going to give it a name we'll call it text field 8 we'll click on the next one and we'll do the same exact thing so come down here make it a text field, and you notice that it gives it now text field 9. It knows, InDesign will know, that each individual box here has to have a different name. Or if I start typing in this one, this one will start typing in as well. So we want to make sure they all have a different name right here up on the field. Okay, for this one right here, in the question, this could be a paragraph. So we want to make sure it's still, in fact, a text field, but we want to make sure that it is a multi-line text field. So you can put in paragraphs of text if you wanted to. Now down here, and it gives it the name, by the way, text field 10. Now this one is a little bit special. This is a combo box. So I'm going to come over here, click on the type flyout, and then come down to combo box right there. Now in this one, there are no items, so we're going to have to start adding some in. So the first thing you do is you just simply just click in this little box right here inside the palette and just start typing different items that you want to place in as your favorite Adobe application. So I'll just type in Illustrator, like that. And then once you finish typing it, you just simply click the plus sign, and then you can add another one in. I'll type in Photoshop. Come down here and type in XD. And let's see, we'll type in, of course, since we're working with it, InDesign. And then we'll just hit the plus sign to have that set in there. Now, if you notice that this is out of order as far as alphabetic. So what I want to do is I want to come down here and click on the sort items checkbox. And that will then place this into alphabetical order. And of course, we can also add more in here if we wanted to. Okay, so that one's pretty much all set up there. Now, the next one we have to do is create some radio buttons. So if you go back to the palette again, you're going to notice this little fly out on the right side. Just come over here and just click on sample buttons and forms. And it has a really neat way of giving you different types of radio buttons. We can make them by hand if we wanted to, or we can just drag out one of these, these if we want to. So I think I'll just take this number 016 right here and I'll just drag it out and drag it right here onto our document we're working on. And I'm gonna close this dialog box out. And since we only have a yes and a no, what I'll do now is just take this last one and then just simply delete this off. I want to take this one here and then move it over here, line it up with the first one, and then line it up with the word setup over there. There you go. So now we have two. Now the thing is, remember that each one of these has its own separate name, okay? Now the thing about the radio buttons, if it's only a choice, if you want to just have one or the other, we have to make sure they're named the same. So if I click on this right here, this radio button, you'll notice it says R at. If I click on this one here, it's the same name. So you can only occupy one at a time. And of course, if you wanted to be able to have multi-choices, then you would just give them each a separate name. So all we have left to do now is the submit button. 
So I'm gonna come down here and then just draw out a simple rectangle. But what I wanna do is I wanna give it a color first. So let's just give it a green color like this. And we'll just put it right over here like that. And I will then come down here and then give it some text. So let's come over here and just type out submit. this and make it a little bit bolder. Let's see what we have here. Probably the um, Almonte looks pretty good. Then we'll increase that size up a little bit like that. That looks good. And we'll give it a white color here. It's paper like that. And then we'll take that and just drag it over here right up on top of this button right here. Line it up a little bit. Kind of move this over. In fact, we can even Go fitting, fit a frame to content. There we go. And then what we can do is then align these both over in the property box here, like this, this way and that way. So yeah, it looks pretty good. We got it lined up pretty nicely. Down a little bit, there we go, looks good. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna then select this and go Command G to group it. Once we've grouped it, we're gonna come back over here to the buttons and forms dialog box palette, and then click that down and then make it a button but over here, we're also going to give it an action because it has to, when you click it, it has to do something, it has to go somewhere. So I'm going to click this little plus sign and then notice all of the different options that you have. You can, you can have it go to a, a, go to a URL, show or hide other buttons and forms, sound, video, and so forth. But what we're going to do is we're going to come all the way down here to the very bottom and go to submit form. Now with this set, you notice that it says URL, okay? Now, it isn't going to a website, but it's going to a mailbox somewhere. So in this case, we have to type in mail to and a colon there. And now you would just simply put in your person who's gonna be receiving this email. So in this case, it's going to be .com. So davidpinter at gce.com is where the end user, this when they hit submit, is going to be going to that particular person. Okay, as far as the normal and rollover and click and so far, if you if you want that to be a different color on a rollover, you just simply click this area here like this, and then double click the green button since we've grouped these. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that's selected, come over here and then just come and then give it a different color. So I'm gonna come down here and give it kind of this light blue color as the rollover, like that. And then on the words themselves, I'm gonna then give that a dark color, like a black. You'll see what that looks like. So we have a, a normal and we have a rollover like this. All right, now that's pretty good. So we have the email address in there and we have everything named properly. So now let's just simply save this and then export it out. Go to File, Export. And one thing you have to make sure when you're doing this is you have to make sure that you have this Adobe PDF Interactive selected. You can't have print, it's gotta be the interactive. So I'm gonna click there. And then I'm just gonna just simply overwrite the one that we have on the desktop here. So I'm gonna hit Replace like this. And then keep the default settings, hit Export. And then what should happen, it should create the PDF, and then you'll be able to then open it up and take a look at what you have here. So this is looking pretty good. So what you would do is you would just simply start filling it out. Like that. And this is of course where the username email address would go into here. And then in the question, As far as your favorite Adobe applications, you can see the little flyout here for the menu dropout, and you can see now we can just select one of these. As far as do you like our product, yes or no, you can only click one at a time, like that, like that. And then finally, then hit the submit button. And as you can see, the default email program loaded up. It's going to david.pinter at gce.com. And it gets already tells you that it has a, uh, a form, has a subject field in there. And then you can just come down here and just basically then start start typing anything you wanted to at this point. Okay, and then you would just simply then just send it out.
And once it's been sent out, the instructor or your professor would then receive that particular document and then you would be good to go. So I'd come over here now to here. There, in fact, there it is right there sitting in my email and there it is. How's it going? So there it is. Working inside of InDesign and with Acrobat creating a submission form.